Do you want to know what the best neighborhoods in DC are? Me too. It changes for every person. I want to fill you in a little bit about what I found today. Hi, welcome back to another Coffee with Coleman. We love to discuss Washington, D.C., business, real estate, all that good stuff. My name is John Coleman. I'm a real estate agent here in Washington, D.C. with the Jason Martin Group. So I started this video by like Googling and looking just like any consumer would of like best neighborhoods in D.C. I came up with an article that was like 2023, best articles, what you can expect. And I pull it up, it was from niche.com and I've actually seen other people posting this and I was like, okay, let me figure out what I need to know. I hope my neighborhood's on there. Take a look at this map. This map is kind of boring. Why is it boring? They're all in one area of the city. It's almost like the city has one quadrant. That's not the case. This city is so much more than those areas. And I want to let you know that there's other areas of the city that you should be exploring because honestly, the average price point of those houses in those areas can be pretty expensive. If you're looking for something a little bit cheaper than those, these options could also be great options for you. And I should note, I do have videos dedicated to some of these neighborhoods, which I'll put the link in the description. So if you want to check out more things about specific neighborhoods, there's a much deeper dive into what to be expecting around here. Starting with number one, which is Capitol Hill. I love Capitol Hill. It's the area that I live in. I've been in there for a long time. And Capitol Hill is kind of this large, expansive area now. It's not just this one little area. It's kind of extended itself into a bunch of different pockets. But you have Eastern Market. You have redevelopment at RFK. You have 8th Street. There's so much going on. And while it's part of the city, it feels a little burby. So you get this kind of cool vibe that's going along with it. And so I love Capitol Hill. And it's one area that you should absolutely check out. And that one, I definitely have a video on that you should check out. The second neighborhood is Petworth. I'm putting this in here because I have so many friends moving to that area right now. I think it's a good area that you should be checking out. And there's this little street over on Upshur that's got like a comedy club. It's got Timber Pizza. It's got Cinder Barbecue. There's a lot to like. It's still metro accessible. And the price point for houses is somewhere between 700,000 to 1.2. And that seems to be a sweet spot in our city for what people are looking for at the moment, even though there doesn't seem to be a ton of inventory, but that's an entirely different conversation for an entirely different video. But Petworth is a nice neighborhood and it's focused around the two circles of Grant and Sherman and you can go over to the Metro stop and there's a bunch of commercial stuff around there as well. So it's an area that I think you should check out. Third is Anacostia. A lot of things to like about Anacostia. They have the Riverwalk Trail. They have a Metro right there. They have that giant chair that you've probably seen pictures of. They have Frederick Douglass's house. They have Busboys and Poets. They have Mahogany Books. There's a lot of really cool stuff happening in the neighborhood. And I always like to go down there and check it out. And I've got a lot of friends, family, and clients that have moved to that area. They seem to really enjoy it as well. Next is Brookland. Kind of seems that people that are looking in Capitol Hill also really like Brooklyn. Thing you need to know about Brooklyn is you tend to get a lot more space. I've also made a video about that one, but you can see much bigger lots and there's a lot of commercial stuff. You got Catholic University there, which is pushing a lot more commercial stuff where you have like a bookstore. And then along 12th Street, you have Minimale and Brooklyn's Finest and a bunch of other things that are just really fun. You were close to a couple Metro stops. You're right on that bike trail that goes from through Brooklyn all the way down to pretty much Union Station. So you can hop on there with your bike and you'd be up and down the city in no time at all. It's a very accessible area and it's got just a really cool vibe to it. A lot of art and street art and stuff like that. Next up, you have Southwest Waterfront. This is kind of divvied up into the old and the new. The old is kind of the stuff that was built in the 60s. You have a lot of condos and co-op. And then the new is like spanking new. Like it's the wharf development. You have these brand new buildings that are high rises and they're luxurious and they're super expensive. The old stuff is very charming. It's got really that 50s, 60s vibe uh, and a lot of co-op. For that period of time, co-ops got super popular in DC. And so you'll see more of those concentrated in that area than most other areas of the city. Next up, we have Michigan Park. And I'm not just saying Michigan Park because I'm from the great state of Michigan. Hey, go blue. I like Michigan Park because I feel like the affordability of that area is still somewhat more approachable than some other parts of the city. Although that always drastically changed quickly or it feels that way. Michigan Park has a lot of really nice standalone homes and again, I've seen a lot of clients moving to that area and have been really enjoying it. And while there's not a ton of commercial development, you can feel it start to hone in and some of the adjacent neighborhoods have some good options around there as well. And last but not least, the people of this neighborhood probably be kind of sad that I'm saying it out loud because they want to keep it a mystery and they want to keep it a secret because it is such an awesome neighborhood. But Lily Ponds, it's right over on the other side of the Anacostia. Lily Ponds is this area that has these standalone houses, but you're also right next to the Kenilworth Aquatic Gardens where you can walk walk along the bridge and they have these really nice parks and it's just absolutely 
gorgeous. It almost doesn't feel like you're in DC when you're in that neighborhood and walking through and going down to the, the water gardens and all that. But it is an area that if you haven't been, it is on my bucket list to take my dog down there and walk around. Maybe I'll do that this summer. You wanna come with me? Let's go. All right, so for that article, I appreciate you. I'm even gonna put the article in the description below so all of you can have access to that as well. But there's so much more to this city outside of the neighborhoods that they highlighted that I wanted to give you some more opportunities to click on. Don't be afraid to reach out to me if you have questions about these neighborhoods or any other ones. I'm in my car all the time driving around and I wanna fill you in on all the stuff that I love, live, and learn about DC. Thanks again for stopping by another Coffee with Coleman. Peace.